Hey everybody, this is Perch and had a lot of requests today uh, about DC increasing their price. So the, the, the challenge is this story is, it's like a fact check. People like we, I, I guess I'm the new Snopes is basically what's going on. Um, <laughs> is this true or is it not true? Well, it is true that some DC books are increasing their price, but not all DC books. And so it's, it's really in the wording. So the story was broken on bleeding cool and then was uh, posted a bunch of other places, but really the story was kind of broken, uh, not, not with bleeding cool, but with uh, the solicitations and just a little bit of, uh, you know, clever, clever looking, um, it tells the story. Now, Bleeding Cool uh, makes a note that prices are going up uh, without a corresponding increase in page count. And they're also, they speculate that this is just the new norm going forward. And uh, neither of those things are confirmed. But what is the story here? Let's back up for a second. It, DC is increasing their price. How, what, where, why? So, okay. Um, many DC comics uh, are actually, uh, are pretty much coming in after Infinite Frontier. Uh, at $4.99. That seems to be the new kind of common story, uh, particularly with ones that have some uh, backups. Some, uh, you know, you have your main story and then you have a backup. So in basically coming to 30 to 32 pages at $4.99. So you saw this with Batman, you saw this with uh, uh, the Joker and several other stories that had backups. So in June, we get to Batman and the Joker. So we get uh, three titles out and, you know, careful eyed uh, sluice um, are noticing in the solicitations, it lists Batman 109, Joker number three and four, Superman red and blue number three, and Wonder Woman black, white, and gold number one, all at uh, $5.99. So basically a, a, a price increase from a just price increase at six dollars and looking more closely now to solicitations we see uh, 40 pages listed there that's the same amount of pages listed when it was the 499 book so what's going on here well what's going on is at least some of the books and i just listed them for you a couple of batman books the wonder woman book the superman red and blue book are being listed at 599 is this a new price point going forward um, I shot a couple emails out. I got one answer back, and that answer was yes, that this is the price going forward for some titles, not all titles. So as an example, um, Catwoman or Harley Quinn is still intended to be $4.99, the smaller price point. Um, Green Lantern is still intended to be $4.99, the price point. However, uh, some books, like the ones I just mentioned, are $5.99. Um, why are they doing this? Well, the, I mean, basically, as far as you can tell, they basically have decided that, you know, having that extra story, having that backup is worth that extra dollar. Um, is it? Well, uh, we shall see. Why did we get a couple issues out at the cheaper price? Well, for the one answer I got in email, the answer I got back was we wanted to give the readers a little something extra for the months of March, April, and May. Not exactly sure that's how extra works, but okay. So the backup stories were basically included there at the old price, but now that you know we're going to be going forward, this is the price for a comic and a backup story. Okay, is this uh, case closed? No, I, I still don't think so, because DC is fishing around for what the right price point is. Um, I, I think... Overall, you're going to see a number of things out of DC. You're going to see some books that are kind of the normal 22-page comic, uh, or 20-page comic in some case. You're going to see the uh, comic with a backup. You're going to see comics with black label. You're going to see comics uh, in different formats, uh, different printing sizes. You're going to see comics that are uh, formerly digital going to print. So you're going to see a lot of different books out. And the books from DC are going to typically range between $4.99 and uh, this this new kind of price point of uh, of seven ninety nine for really big issues when it's an anniversary issue like they did last year and the year before it's going to be nine ninety nine, but it does look like for core titles, we're going to zero in at a six dollar five ninety nine price point, and this is this is going to be where they have the main book and a backup, and that that appears to be what they're going to try for a while. Um, so those are the facts as I know them. Um, I would I would say if you are, you know, before you jump to any conclusions and, and believe this is, you know, forever the future, I think it is worth um, at least at least being a little careful. 
Um, I think if this price point doesn't go over well, if there's reader revolt, if there's a lot of those other things, I think they have a very easy mechanism to bring the price back down. This isn't a fixed price. Price does not always go statically up. Back when the direct market was having a lot of experimentation in the late 80s and 90s, they were, they were bouncing prices up and down from time to time. So I don't know that this is necessarily a done deal. Um, I do think that it, DC in general, the three ninety nine price point, which there will still be a couple comic books at that price, um, is going to become a thing of the past. I think they're going to probably utilize the backup story method more often. Uh, they, they are getting good feedback about this. Again, not for me. I'm, I'm not a fan of the backup story. I think many of these backup stories are, uh, you know, should be just sold as comics. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like the idea of cramming in a story. Uh, especially ones that are totally very different, like Justice League Dark and Justice League. You couldn't really think of two very different concepts, writing styles and everything else than uh, Bendis, Ram V on the two books. So I, I just, uh, I, I don't think it's, I, I'd rather see them come out with a bi-monthly or quarterly Justice League Dark book just by itself, rather than making you pay for a backup Justice League Dark story in Justice League. I don't, I don't think that does Justice League uh, or Justice League Dark any favors. And I think it, uh, you know, there's an interesting psychological effect that happens where even if you're getting the same amount of pages for the main story, when it has a little small backup story, you, th you, you think that it's smaller somehow. You think that your main story is smaller. You think that your backup story is just like a, a preview or a tease. I, I've talked to a lot of people about this and they just, the, uh, the format doesn't work for them. It just, you, you always feel like you're getting less even when the page count is exactly the same. And it's just strange. Um, I think that overall, I mean, what you're seeing from DC here is that you're seeing this fishing about to figure out what the new price point they can kind of land on is. I think overall with DC, you're going to see fewer titles. I, that's not a bold prediction. That is what we're seeing. And I think they're going to charge more for the titles you're getting. I think they're going to try and make give off the appearance of them being a higher prestige item, uh, a little bit more in theory valuable. Um, but you know, will it actually be that? Uh, hard to tell. Uh, maybe not. Um, I, I think this is overall, this is a bad trend. This is not the direction it needs to be going. I think when you're at $6, you're, you're uh, for a, you know, what is in effect a, um, you know, a 30 page story or so that is, uh, that's tough. I, I just, that's, that's all. That's a, that's a high price point coming very, very quickly. I gather a lot of inflation is going to happen uh, with the pandemic. And as people are coming back in, you're going to see plenty of it. But that's just, uh, this is not an industry that can really take that inflation. It's just not, it's not ready for it. It's not adept at it. And I think you're starting to near a price point where, I mean, I, I don't know. If you go into a uh, bookstore or a Barnes & Noble and you are trying to buy a My Hero Academia book, I mean, you're you're able to come in, especially if you're a member, uh, under 10 bucks for a lot of those books. And if you get 20% off on top of that, if now you're at $8, I mean, I, those books are like 200 pages in some cases. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I just, I think that's going to look really weird, really fast uh, for DC. And, and so I hope it doesn't stick. I hope it's a temporary experiment, but, um, you know, being honest, you know, glass half empty, um, Price increases, even though they sometimes roll back, like I mentioned, they tend to not. And if they are books like Batman, in this case, this is Tinian's Batman, that is a book they know is going to sell to a established audience. How many people are willing to say, no, I'm not going to pay $6 for Batman, even though I like Batman, even though that that's got the, uh, the, the better art teams on it. That's that, even though that's the book that DC kind of curates and cares about, uh, $6 is too much to pay for, you know, 20 pages of comic and a, or 22 pages and an eight page backup. That's too much. Uh, I'm not willing to do that. Uh, you know, Tinian and, and Julian March on Joker. Um, want to see that story interest, see the hook of, uh, of commissioner Gordon, but at $6, I'm, I'm out. Um, all of this in theory will precipitate people going to the trade. The, the problem is, as I've also said before, people who go to the trade, often never actually make it back to buy the trade. They'll say things like, I'm going to save some money and I'm not going to buy the individual floppies and I'm just going to wait. And then uh, the trade comes out, I don't know, three months later, four months later, and they're like, well, you know, I think I'll just keep saving money. And that's, that's where we're at. I don't know. I also think that, you know, 
stimulus check aside, I do think that the economy is is going to hurt and things are going to suffer. And, uh, you know, casual spending like this tends to be the stuff that that's hurt the most. So now's not the time to go to six dollars and you want new readers in. And I mean, I can't even begin to imagine a, uh, you know, a, some 12 year old kid who's looking to get into comics and start collecting them being willing to fork over six bucks. It's just that's that's tough. You are, uh, I think you're one dollar cheaper than Disney Plus for the month at this point. Uh, that's for a single comic. That's that's not going to work. But but maybe I've got it all wrong. I'm too thrifty, MT frugal. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, what do you think about this price? Does it make sense? I I'm, I'm especially curious to to hear from people who think it does make sense. I suspect most of you are going to be like hell no. But but we will see. Uh, thanks for listening. Like and subscribe. And uh, oh, I did this all backwards. Like and subscribe. And thanks for listening. There you have it.